Hello and welcome back. Um, today I'm actually uploading a double up video I played with a friend of mine. And the rank is around Emerald 1, Diamond 5. And actually this week I played a lot of games. Well, a lot. <laughs> I played maybe 5, I think, 5 solo queue games. But I kept getting 4th and 5th, which... I think maybe if I played slightly better in some other games, I could have gotten a little bit higher placement. But it genuinely felt like all of the games this week were kind of just difficult to get top three in. Um, part of that is because I was trying to play for, you know, better content because I want something you guys can enjoy better rather than just showing you meta comps every single week. Um, like for example, I tried to play Find Vintage, and then I made a comp with it, I believe it went fourth. If you have Find Vintage, you can actually play Cast It in multi Shaker Reroll pretty easily. And then I also win Zap Attack with a double artifact on Blitzcrank. I had Innervating Locket, uh, I believe it's called it, the Locket plus the Forbidden Idol. So he had infinite stacking shields, and then the Locket made him cast more often, and it was pretty fun. Uh, and the game, all the games were really close, but like, in the game where I went 4th, it was very close. If I had won the fight, I think I would have been top 2 instead of 4th. And then the, Z the Zap Attack Blitzkrieg game, if I had won the fight, I think I would have been top 3 instead of 5th. Uh, like, all the games are super close this week, but I just couldn't get one that ended up being 1st or 2nd or even like 3rd. So I thought, you know, I don't really want to show you guys these, even though they, they were interesting and they were fun. But, um... I do think since they weren't meta or like I wasn't playing super strong comps, it was kind of things I was making up, then I felt like I shouldn't share them because I don't want anyone to try and copy that and end up losing games. So this game here is just a double up game I played with my friend. You can see we are on Scuttle Puddle, which kind of incentivizes leveling up usually. So I am thinking about that, right? I'm currently holding mages because I got a Vex, and I actually end up getting double Soraka and double Seraphine. I sell everything to make 20 gold, because I'm thinking I'm just going to commit to mage, most likely. And here I have an interesting decision. I really didn't want to go with Doesn't Kill You, and Epoch as well. The issue with these, and potions, I don't have any witches. But yeah, the issue with economy augments when you're playing Scuttle Puddle, is especially the golden ones like epoch it's basically six gold around right or 10 gold per stage that does not do much uh to be honest transfiguration could be okay by the way but i actually decide to tank take too tanky here and i'll explain why it isn't just because i'm trying to have fun or anything like that i genuinely think it's pretty strong and the reason for that is that when you play mages you have two main tanks, assuming you have an emblem. You play Mordekaiser, and you play Vex. And if you have an emblem, that only requires seven units. And we're on Scuttle Puddle, right? So my thought process was, I can easily hit level seven, I can easily two-star all my units, maybe three-star Vex and Mordekaiser if possible, and then I can play at level eight, I can play a second Vex, at level nine, I can play a second Mordekaiser. And I think two tanky, as long as you have two units getting value from two tanky, then I think it's pretty much worth it, I would say. It is definitely pretty niche uh, for yes, an augment. I wouldn't recommend taking it <laughs> no if you don't have a really good idea of what you're going to play. Because it does limit your choices a little bit. But I do think it can be pretty strong. So, especially with mages. Because they do a lot of double casts, like Vex and Mordekaiser, they both give themselves massive shields, right? And in this case, two tanky makes them get higher HP, and then they also get shielded when they one of them dies, they get a big shield, right? It just makes them more and more tanky. In the mage comp, one of the small issues with it is you have a lot of backline, right? You pretty much only have Galio and Vex and Mordekaiser as your front line. Galio is very, very, very squishy as a level unit. Usually it's pretty much just Vex tanking everything alongside Mordekaiser. So yeah, this was my thought process. I could go Mage, I can get rid of the, the Mage weakness, which is not having enough frontline by playing too tanky. We can't do and yeah, 
And then I'm also, of course, doing a little bit of scouting. During this game, I was talking with my partner because I think if you play double up, you should be in voice chat with your partner. It'll make it so much easier. You need to just talk about your, um, your shops, talk about your augments, talk about what you're playing, right? What does your partner need? So in this case, I see my partner. I know he's going dragon. He's going dragons. He's playing Shapeshifter Shivana, which is an S tier comp currently. Uh, I don't believe they've nerfed it yet. Pretty sure. Since the last patch, it has been S tier. And pretty much you just play six Shapeshifter and then you play Namzi and Smolder. And the main carries are Namzi, Shivana, and then Smolder. Once you get Smolder, you can put items on Smolder. Sometimes you can maybe put items on Nasus as well, late game. But it is very strong because they buffed the dragons and I think they, did they buff Shivana? I, I forgot what exactly they buffed, but they made Shivana, Namzi, Smolder really strong. I think it was the traits that got buffed, plus the units a bit. And here, of course, I would like to win the fights, but I can't really do anything about it. Um, I don't know if people understand how stage one works, but generally people get three items, right? Three item components. Sometimes you get five and sometimes you get two, right? In this case, we all got two. We only got two components each in the lobby. So that pretty much means if you didn't get the perfect item or like a usable item from the two components you got, then you don't have an item for stage two. And in my case, I got QSS as my combinable item, right? I got a cloak and a glove, which is not something I want to make. That's really weak for mages. Like QSS doesn't do anything. Uh, I'd say QSS doesn't do anything for most teams, especially not early game. It doesn't really do anything. It's just a small amount of attack speed. And so here I do end up going for Guardbreaker, I believe. I definitely should. Yeah, okay. So I just go Guardbreaker because it comes with a Vagar, and I think Guardbreaker is one of my favorite items on Vagar. I really like Guardbreaker Jewel Gauntlet on Vagar when you're playing mages. Because the mage gets... Once you play 7 mages, you actually get bonus AP uh, on your cast, and you double cast, which gets a lot, gives a lot of value to having critical chance and being able to crit on the abilities. And then positioning wise, I don't think there's much to say, I just have my, my back line right. Most important units in the back corner, and then Vex is in center middle because she is the only tank, my only front line. Also, I do see that I am technically contested, but I also see that my opponent went Stars Are Born. And I see he has Seraphine Soraka on bench, so my assumption is he's going to reroll the one cost. And this is what scouting helps you with, right? I see he has Stars Are Born, he already has two star Soraka, two star Seraphine. Um, he has a bunch of the units, he probably is going to go for three star, which means I should not be doing oh, yeah. that as well. Because it's going to kill my Econ if I try to contest him on the 1-1 one, one stars. So in this case, I just decide, okay, I probably years. just want to get to level 7 as quickly as possible. Because I know someone's contesting me. They can take the 1 stars, or the 1 costs. I'll take the 3 costs. I'll take Vex. I'll take Mordekaiser. I'm happy with that. If I can get 2-2 two, two star Vexes and 2-2 two, two star Mordekaisers, that is more than enough for me to feel confident and be able to get to level 9, be able to play 7 mage, right? So, that's the game plan here. And, hmm, you know, I get a lot of questions about um, econ in particular, or economy, when I'm like, when I've coached people in the past. A lot of times they don't realize how important early game interest is. And so, maybe some decisions don't make sense to you when you see me play. Like, for example, earlier in the game, I made 20 gold, right? I only kept the mages, I sold every other unit. Of course, there's a lot of possibilities. You think, oh, you could be flexible, do this, do that. I think it's much better to just make econ early and then play around your items and your augments. So, once I have two tanky, I, of course, can be pretty flexible in a sense. Um, but I do have to play something that has room to play copies of units. Like, for example, I think Honeymancy is actually quite decent with two tanky uh, because the trait is pretty much just five units and then you can just add on like another another blitz crank another new new uh, and then you just have you know seven units still so it's very easy to get that value from two tanky 
But in this game, I do just end up leveling and leveling, right? Because it's Scuttle Puddle, and I really don't like re-rolling on Scuttle Puddle if I don't have to. Because you just get outscaled is the main issue. You, de you tend to get outscaled pretty hard. So for example, you see it's 3-1. We're stage 3-1, right? Generally, at this point, no one is even... Maybe people are level 5. There's pretty much no one level 6 on a regular game without Scuttle Puddle. I'm almost level 7. And I have 52 gold. And I have a bunch of mages. So, I'm, yeah, the point I'm just trying to make here is, especially on Scuttle Puddle, re-rolling tends to feel really weak. I could be re-rolling right now for Hon Honey Man seeing, playing that with 2 Tanky. I could be doing some other thing, right, that allows me to play, um, or to re-roll 1 or 2 costs. But it just feels really weak when I could just be level 8, you know, uh, by Wolves, which is really early. Because generally you can't go level 8 until at least like 4-1 or 4-2 if you don't have economy augments. But yeah, so making interest and getting that extra gold early on in non-Scuttle Puddle games is really important. But even in Scuttle Puddle games, it's still important, right? Because that extra gold doesn't come back. And then here I end up getting Mage Crest. Um, I don't think I need to explain why. I'm committed to playing Mage at this point, and Mage Crest is by far the best, I think. Not necessarily the best augment you can get, but having a Mage Crest is so very, it's so good. You get to not play Seraphine, and then you also don't have to find Nora and Yumi until much later. Like, once I get Nora and Yumi, I can replace Seraphine. But until then, I can play 7 Mage really easily, and I don't need to find a, a legendary unit. So it just saves you, ends up saving you a ton of health and trouble late game, or mid game, I would say. Because mid game is usually when you struggle with mages, because you might have 5 mages, it's really strong early game. Stage 2, stage 3 can be really strong 5 mage. But if you get stage 4 and you never find Nora and Yumi, and then you're stage, stage 6, you still haven't found it, it can be... You know, it can kill your odds of going top 4. So having a mage emblem uh, is really good. Yeah, basically. When you're trying to go full vertical mage, 7 mages. The same is true for Eldritch, for example. And even, like, for Portal. Because Portal, you don't have to find Nora and Yumi to get 8 Portal. And then for Eldritch, you don't have to find Briar. So for any of these comps, any of these comps that require, like, a legendary to get the max There's amount of, out of the trait... Together. Well, not the max, right? You can go 10 mage, but you need 3 emblems, so that's completely different. I just mean, whatever, 7 in this case would be the max for mage, right? Generally speaking. So to get 7 mage, you usually need a legendary. That's difficult to find. So getting an emblem helps a lot. And then I already had uh, explained my thought process with 2 Tinky, right? So you can see here I'm playing 2 Mordekaisers. Of course, if I did have a Nami, I would be playing Nami over the second Mordekaiser. But that just means I can get to level 8 and play a second Mordekaiser and a second Vex at level 9. Or, you know, vice versa. Basically, level 8 and 9, I'll be adding a second copy of my two main tanks. Also, when you play Mage and you, you when you re-roll, generally speaking, you put it on Mordekaiser. So... And that, that's because when you reroll for, let's say, Vex and Vagar, and you do have a Mage Emblem, then you need the best thing to reroll for is another tank that is 3 star. And Mordekaiser fits that, that, you know, that requirement. So, usually, yeah. And he also gives Vanguard. So, pretty much, you just play 7 Mage at level 7. If you have the Nami rights, you can play 7 Mage. And then you just reroll for the Vex the Vagar and the Mordekaiser, any three star, all of them. That's like best case scenario when you are re-rolling. This game, however, I do see that I'm double contested. <laughs> There's actually three of us playing mages. So my thought is I just need to two star everything and then continue to level up. And here I considered going for the rod, but I was thinking I might have too many rods. Even though I am playing mage, and rod tends to be pretty good with mages, of course. But it just felt like I would end up with too many rods, yeah. And here, you can't do enough with bows uh, in mage, in my opinion. 
Maybe I could. You can go Nashra's Tooth, and you can go Giant Slayer, for example, a Static Shiv even. But two bows is already probably more than you want when you're playing Mage. Three bows is definitely way too many bows. So in this case, I just go Red Buff because you know it's really strong. It's anti heal. I need it eventually, and you know, I if I get a belt and a, a rod, I wouldn't want to make Morello. I'd rather make Red Buff and get rid of the bows. And I'm checking what my partner needs. I see he just needs Nomzi and Shivana, pretty much. Because that's what he's re-rolling for. And when you play double up, even if you're not in a voice call with your partner or your teammate, I think it's good to scout their board consistently and just try and see what they're playing. Because I've, I've played solo queue double up in the past uh, a few times, not, not that much. But when I did, of course, I wasn't in chat with my random teammate. I would just look at their board every round and see what they're doing, try to see what they need. And then, you know, you can hold units for your partner, send them to them. And double up is very interesting. There's there's a lot of different... Mm, like, the gameplay is very different from single player. Ranked, yeah. And then here, I check what my partner needs. I see he could use an item, so I just send him a component anvil. Because I see his items are a little bit weird, and it looks like he would like to get rid of a cloak, so he might want a gargoyles or something. So just sending him a component anvil will help him with that. Oh, and then positioning as well. Positioning, um, generally, just having range units in the back corner is strong, right? It's good, especially with mage when you have Seraphine who shoots in a line through the board, and then. I have my secondary tanks, Mordekaiser, Galio, sitting behind Vex, and that's because Vex is way tankier than them, and this way she'll take pretty much all the aggro from the enemy team before they hit my other tanks, which just gives them a chance to ult more often, maybe do more damage, especially these two Mordekaisers. See, as you can see... As you can see here, Vex still hasn't died even though she was alone in the front line. And she actually lives through the entire fight. So Galio and Mordekaiser, and then almost second Mordekaiser, all three of the, the, the tanks in the second row almost died before Vex did. That is why I put her alone in the front line. And I finally find Nomzi, so I send it to my teammate, two star, two star Nomzi. And in double up, you get the you can send a unit to your teammate. The blue sender, right, you can use every five rounds. So since I just sent my teammate this, then, you know, once we get to four or five, I'll be able to send him another unit. And after, from stage four and onward, you can send four and five cost units as well. But in this case, right, I just send Nomzi first, and then I think I'm probably pretty much just thinking oh, I'll probably end up sending Shivana. Try to send Shivana two star to my teammate if, uh, if I can find it for him. And then here I should just start slow rolling. I also get Nami from my teammate, which is great. Helps me a lot. Now I have seven mage. So of course I'm not getting value from two tanky, obviously. I'm scouting here. I see this person's playing Galio uh Galio Mordekaiser, Galio, uh Galio Vex Vagar. I'm checking who's playing what, and I see uh, this guy also, Vagar, Galio, Vex. So I see there's pretty much four people, including myself of course, three other people, playing units I kind of need. And then here I slammed every item extremely fast. I think these are by far the best items I could have gotten. Uh, Shoujin is incredible, Jewel Gauntlet with Guard Breaker is incredible, and Gargoyles for my Vex is incredible. So I have no complaints, I just make the items instantly. I do end up losing though very badly actually i think he beat me by like five units or something but it's because he was playing rumble so he's playing a two cost reroll and he already hit his units so he's pretty much already capped out his board right my board isn't quite capped out i can still hit a lot of two and three stars and i can level up to level nine here i don't think bulwark is necessary and then the other augment wasn't either i was considering blossoming lotus mainly I don't think a Radiant item does enough, and yeah, so I was looking pretty much just at Blossoming Lotus, because I have two tanky, so it, it is a pretty good combo, right? 
Blossoming Lotus every few seconds, we get more crit chance on the team. And two tanky makes it so we can last longer. I do end up taking Spellcaster's Toolbox though. And that's because I'm playing Mages. And I feel like it's more bursty. So pretty much I just think the fights aren't going to be super long. Even though I do have a pretty tanky Vex with two tanky. At least later I will. But I also think that this is better right now. So... And it's not necessarily bad later, it's still really good. I'm I'm actually not sure which one's better. I would have to check the statistics to see which one has a higher win rate. But I expect that they both have positive win rates, or positive delta. Here I show up on my teammates board, but unfortunately my, my whole team pretty much spawned right in front of Seraphine, so she just hit them all. And then here I decide to level, I think. Yes, okay. So I, the reason I level instead of re-rolling, like I said I would, is because I know I'm getting contested by three people, which just means I, uh, if I roll, use my gold is pretty much like, I don't know what percentage less effective, but it's like significantly less effective to roll. Because each roll I have such a low chance of finding Vex and Mordekaiser just because of these other players in the lobby. So rolling here feels like a trap, in my opinion. I think it's just incorrect. And so yeah, the the goal is just get to level nine, play Nora and Yumi, two star everything, and um, hopefully find two star Mord and two star Vex, so I can play two copies of each. I see my teammates fighting the. Also, I noticed my teammates holding a lot of items. I, it looks like I was wondering why he hadn't played double adaptive helm on his Shivana. Which, yeah. Um, and it's my teammate also, by the way, is Emerald. He's an Emerald player, and I see this mistake a lot in even in Diamond. To be honest, I think even sometimes in Masters, but. You should not be greeting items most of the time. If you have a, a ton of components on your bench for multiple rounds, you're probably not playing correctly. Um, in my case, you saw early game, the second I got a playable item, I only had QSS at first, which is not playable, but the second I got Guard Breaker, I made Guard Breaker. And you, know, you, you should be making items, right? You shouldn't be holding components on your bench for extended periods of time, like an entire stage, uh, generally. Of course, TFT is a game about being flexible and like adapting. So I can't give you any 100% any things, but most games, if not, you know, if you're not full loose streaking because you're playing, let's say fortune or fortune uh, yeah, Fortune favors the bold or um, scoreboard scrapper or one of these augments that need you to lose. If you're not fully losing or lose streaking early game, especially yeah, mid game, late game, you should always have your items made, pretty much. And you'll you'll probably have noticed that that's why all of my games you can see I pretty much have all my items slammed pretty early on. I don't like to leave components on my my bench. Because that can add up very easily. If you lose a fight because of a component on your bench, that can cost you 5 health. If you lose multiple fights, 5, 10, 20, you know, you lose a bunch of health. So here I instantly pop this anvil. And I'm thinking about what I can play. Mostly I'm considering Redemption or Adaptive Helm. And I do just decide Adaptive Helm because I think having 3 items on my main tank is important. So. Also, you see my my teammates or my partner this uh, this match. He finally made double adaptive helm for Shivana, and that's because I told him I was like, "Oh, I don't think you should um, you should be holding these items, especially when you have golden egg. Uh, if you have golden egg, I think you should be as strong as possible every fight, and that means you know you shouldn't have five components on your bench, right? So yeah, I will say uh, TFT." Most of the time, you're playing around your items and augments somewhat flexibly. 
because most items are okay. There are obviously better items than others, like Shojin is better than Morello, right? Uh, early game. It's more kind of... They're both pretty flexible. Or like Red Buff, for example. Red Buff is super flexible of an item. You can play with a ton of comps. Uh, something else, on the other hand, like Rage Blade, is not quite as flexible. Usually that can only go on Jinx, Callista, maybe Smolder, right? So some items are just inherently more flexible than others. You can also play Rage Blade on Cassiopeia, for example. So let's say you have a Rage Blade. You have three components early game. Also, I sent my teammate Smolder because he needs it for Dragon. But let's say early game, stage one or stage two, you have three components to start. You have a Rage Blade, so a bow, a rod, and a cloak. If you make Ionic Spark, it is a little flexible, but you kind of are incentivized to play AP no matter what, right? It's very a little bit generic, and it's not super strong early game, that little bit of magic pen, right? It doesn't really do much early game. Runans. Runans does better the more AD you have, which means an attack speed you have. So if Runans is the single item you have, it doesn't tend to be very strong because you don't have, you don't have upgraded units early game and you don't have a lot of AD because of that. So you don't have augments, you don't have attack speed, right? So if you had bow, rod, and cloak, in my opinion, you should pretty much always make a Rage Blade if you're not trying to lose uh, loose streak. So I would go Rage Blade here and then I'd have a cloak. And to me, that means I'm probably playing Callista. It's the easiest thing to play. Uh, maybe you end up playing Jinx, though. Yeah. Maybe you end up playing C Cassiopeia. It depends how many Cassiopeias you find, how many Jinxes you find along the way, right? And you also have to keep in mind you're trying to keep your interest high, for example. Also here, for the item, I believe only Giant Slayer is playable. Um, could be Steadfast Heart. Aside from that, the other items are not good uh, from these options. So I do just go Giant Slayer. But yeah, as I was saying, this is how items work, right? You want to make the item that is the strongest, but also a, at least somewhat flexible and useful early game, right? Useful early game and also can be useful late game. So yeah, in the example I just gave, if you had like a bow, a rod, and a cloak, I think you'd pretty much always go Rage Blade. Unless, let's say you had, you know, everything is all about being flexible. So let's say you had a bunch of mages like me this game, and I had the exact components I just said, then I would go Ionic Spark, right? Because I'm playing mages. Uh, Rage Blade is not useful for mages. But this is where the whole, what units do you have? What components do you have? And what augments do you have? They all kind of influence what items you make. But generally speaking, you should always be making items because they save you a lot of health over time. So this game, for example, me and my teammate are sitting at 40 health, right? If I was greedy with my items early game, I didn't make Guard Breaker, I didn't make Ionic Spark, I didn't make this, that. We'd probably be a lot less health and our opponents would have more health, right? Because you having more health is not just a one-way thing. If you have more health, you're taking health from another team, another player. Also, you can see here, Mordekaiser's 1v5ing, but he's getting stunned over and over by Galio and Nami. Oh, it was so close. So, so close. He nearly 1v5s, but he got stunned, I think it was four times or six times? He got stunned an insane amount of times. Also here, I really wanted this Nora and Yumi. And I, I was kind of just yapping a little bit explaining items maybe i should make a video on it um if anyone's watching till this point and you would be and you think you might be interested in that i could try and make a video explaining items and item slams i think part of it is knowing what items are strong but you know i'd say no it is pretty complicated so yeah if you guys would be interested in that maybe i can try and make a video and post that another day or next week for example also here, I did find Nora and Yumi, and I got the Nora and Yumi, so I just go ahead and give her all the items. It would be nice to put the Jeweled Gauntlet on her, maybe, but the thing is, I really want her to have the red buff. So, yeah. I'm, I'm basically just thinking, if we make it to Dragon, I could maybe get another item for her. 
move the red buff to Nami, and that would be perfect. Then I could have items on Vagar, Nora, and also Nami. Here it's very awkward. I actually get a Radiant item from my teammate, and it, it gives me Morello, which is really strong. Um, I don't know if anyone knows about this, but Morello and Red Buff have gotten nerfed, and their Radiant versions have gotten nerfed a bunch of times, and then also buffed and nerfed both nerf. Like, it just depends. They, they've both been in touched a lot of times by Riot over the past few sets, at least since I was playing, especially since last set. And that is because Radiant, Red Buff, and Morello were by far the best items in the game until they got nerfed. They both used to do 3% burn over 30 seconds. So if you got a Radiant, Morello, or Red Buff, and you put it on someone who could spread the anti-heal the anti -heal or the burn really effectively, then it would pretty much just kill the entire enemy team with true damage. So it was kind of just absurdly strong until they did nerf it down to 2%. And then they also changed the stats a little bit. I'd say they're still really strong though. Definitely very strong. And then here I'm just looking at my teammate. I think I'm I'm checking what they need. And I see he has a Twitch. So I was thinking, oh, maybe he wants an Olaf instead of Twitch. That might be something I can send him if I do have it. But I, I think I sent him two smolders to help him three star it, or two star it. Oh no, I only sent him one smolder. So yeah, I was thinking I probably want to send him smolder or Olaf, right? And this is only a double up thing, right? If you're solo queue, you don't need to think about these things. But um, in double up, I think it's good to think about what your partner needs and try to keep an eye out for it. And yeah, I mean, I don't know if I need to explain anything else, really, but the mage comp is, like I said, it's just seven mages and Mordekaiser. And usually that's if you're re-rolling him. If you're not re-rolling, uh, let's say you're going 8-9 for whatever reason, then maybe you play Tom Kench instead of Mordekaiser. But since I was re-rolling and I was playing too tanky, I did end up playing Mordekaiser. And like, for example, I have Tom Kench in my shop, but I, I can't afford it. Uh, the game's pretty much over, and I have almost no gold. So trying to get a two-star Tom Kench plus another Tom Kench for two tanky value would be really, really difficult. And then here I actually drop Vex off of the dragon, so I end up getting another two-star. It's perfect, I get my Nami two-star. Now I just want Nora and Yumi and a good charm. Tremors is really good. This is one of the better combat augments. It also got nerfed uh, in various ways, and that's because it was too strong, <laughs> right? Yeah. By the way, I did make a mistake here. I think I wasn't, I just didn't notice. I should have removed Nora and Yumi, and then, then I could have switched the items around a little bit. I think anti-heal on, or Morello. No, no, no. I think Giant Slayer maybe could have been on Nami, and then Death Cap or Archangels could be on Nora and Yumi. Uh, in this case, I would probably go Death Cap on Nora and Yumi. And that's just because Nora and Yumi, she kind of hits the back line with her ultimate. When she casts, right, if you don't know how her ultimate works, when she casts, it pretty much shoots like a little circle of fire, which you can see on the screen here. Shoots like a little circle that stays on the ground. And then when she casts again, she'll hit another area that hasn't been hit yet. So that means she ends up hitting back line more often, which gives the death cap a bit more value. Like death cap would be better than giant slayer because giant slayer has a prerequisite health amount 1750 health right and a lot of backline units don't have that much health so death cap is just like you know has no requirements it just gives you bonus damage i will say though it is also really good on nami there's nothing wrong with it especially since nami is two star the only problem is nami doesn't have a mana generation item like if she had shojin instead of i don't know archangels maybe that might be better it, it's hard though because i don't have the removers to do that also i lose this very very close because i fought eight witchcraft and he stunned my team last second and this um the only thing i can do now is 
My teammate sends me two stars more on Yumi, which is great. It's incredible. But the only thing I can do now is roll for a charm. But the thing is, there's no one cost com combat charm that I can get, which is really sad. I would love to buy a back row star, but I don't have enough gold. I would need one more gold. And that's why gold matters, right? <laughs> if I made a mistake and lost one interest earlier, then uh, it just uh, cost me a charm. I don't know if that's, if I did, I wasn't that focused. I don't think I did, but um, yeah. But for example, if I had one additional gold here, I'd be able to buy this charm. And then here, I just position myself in front of his backline. Or across from his backline. And then I think we barely end up losing. <laughs> we lose by one health. You can see they were minus six and we were minus seven. I beat them. I made them take six damage. They beat my teammate. They made him take seven. So yeah, that's the game. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like. And you can leave me some questions in the comments if you like as well. Okay? Alright, see you guys next time. Goodbye.